we have discussed all the disorders related to kidneys and the excretory system. If both the kidneys fail, which we call the complete renal failure, then dialysis was one option. But if we want to completely uh, treat it, then the only option is kidney transplantation or renal transplantation. So we are talking of renal or kidney transplantation. The first kidney transplantation was performed in 1954 and that was done by a Washington surgeon. His name was Dr. Charles Huffnagel and it was done between identical twins. Between So, the identical twins, one was the donor and the other one was the recipient. So, this is the first kidney transplant. First in India was performed in Christian Medical College, Vellore. in the year 1971. So this is some historical background of the kidney transplantation. Now, what is that situation when a person needs kidney transplant? Is when both the kidneys of that person have stopped functioning and if kidneys don't work, then toxic substances like urea, creatinine, hippuric acid, they are not eliminated. If they don't get eliminated, they accumulate in the body, in blood and tissues and start causing toxic uh, effect. So, this kidney transplantation has to be performed. So, there has to be a donor. So, what are all are going to, the things are going to be checked for the donor. So, if we talk about the donors, who can be the donor? If, as we have seen here, if it is an identical twin, then we call it autograft. If the kidney is taken from identical twin, then it is termed as autograft. When it is taken from identical twin. So this is the kidney, donor kidney that we are talking of. If it is taken from any other donor, who can be a sibling, a close relative or any other member, then we will call it allograft. Allograft is kidney of other person. Now, that other person could be a living donor and living donor could be the sibling, a relative or an unknown donor, an unknown person, then also it is known as allograft. And if the kidney is not available from any living individual, then it is taken from a dead body. That is known as cadaver. So from cadaver also it is taken. And cadaver is dead body who has probably died because of brain death due to some kind of injury. So this is uh, the donor. We have to check whether, whether the donor is healthy, uh, the age appropriate and free of diseases. So the third thing which has to be checked is the donor should be free of diseases. Diseases like hypertension, diabetes, malignancy, those kind of diseases. And then donor recipient matching has to be done. So the next thing is donor recipient matching. And the things which are to be matched first is blood group. 
the donor and the recipient should have the same blood group so that there is no ABO or RH incompatibility. The second thing which has to match is the antigen which is present on the leukocyte. It is known as human leukocyte antigen. That is HLA. HLA is the abbreviation which is given to this antigen and it is present on leukocytes. This antigen every individual receives three sets, three sets from mother and three sets from father. So maximum matching would help in the donor to give the uh, kidney to the recipient. So there are three sets of antigens which uh, so every individual has six sets. Three sets received from mother and three sets received from father. More of the antigens they match uh, on the leukocytes of donor and recipient better that graft would be. So there are two main things which are to be matched blood groups human leukocyte antigen and before that the antibody matching is also done. So third is antibody matching. In this what is done is the blood from donor and recipient is mixed in the test tube and it is checked for any kind of reaction. But the main two things are this uh, antigen of leukocyte and the blood groups. Now after the donor's kidney matches with the recipient's body in all these respects, then the kidney is taken out. As soon as the kidney is taken out, it is flushed with a coolant that is mannitol type of substance. So the kidney after it is being taken out is flushed with a coolant like mannitol and stored in iced solution stored in iced solution after the kidney has been taken out from the donor's body it should be transplanted within 48 hours to have best effect. So transplantation within 20, sorry, 48 hours is best because this is the time when the kidney is able to start its functioning as soon as it is transplanted into the body of the recipient. Now, how is this kidney going to be transplanted? So, we will understand that by a simple diagram now. Let us draw a diagram to understand the position of the original kidneys and then how the new kidney would be transplanted and where. So, here we are drawing the two kidneys. That is, these are the ones which are old and they have stopped functioning. And... From each kidney arises this ureter and this ureter opens into the urinary bladder and here is this bladder. Now because our main focus is on new kidney we are not showing that trigon and all those things which we have understood when we were drawing the structure of the excretory system. So now here this is the position. Each kidney receives blood through the artery. So this is the main artery which is bringing the blood into each kidney. So from here there is a branch which goes into this kidney and a branch which goes here. So this, this is the artery which is supplying blood to the kidney. This blood then goes through the glomerulus, filtration takes place and all. But as these kidneys are not working, here that filtration process is not taking place. From here arises a vein which brings the blood out and this is the vein which is going to take all that blood. So here we are drawing this vein which is in blue and this is the vein which is coming out of the kidney. So one artery supplying blood to both the kidneys, 
then vein which is taking the blood from after filtration from the kidney. So these kidneys which we have drawn are the old non-functional kidneys. And because they are non-functional, we require transplantation in this situation. The new kidney is transplanted in the renal fossa area in this lower part. So here is the new kidney which is placed. So this is the new kidney. This is new transplanted kidney which has been taken from the donor after all that matching. The artery which is going here, now from this artery, a branch is connected to the kidney. Basically what is being done now, this artery is used to supply blood to the new kidney. And from here, the vein is connected to this vein. That means the artery which was going into the new kidney. So new kidney when it was taken, it had its vein and its artery. So this artery was connected to the artery of the recipient. This is donor's kidney which has been transplanted. So artery of donor's kidney is connected to the artery of recipient and the vein is connected to the vein. The ureter of the donor's kidney or the transplanted kidney is connected to the bladder. This is the urinary bladder. So it is placed, it is transplanted very close to the bladder. There is connection with the main circulation of the recipient's body so that the blood flow starts in the kidney. Normally, as soon as the blood flow starts, uh, filtration takes place and urine production starts but sometimes it takes time about a week's time also and as soon as filtration would take place urine would come into the bladder and would get eliminated that means the old non-functional kidneys are allowed to remain in their position a new kidney gets transplanted here after transplantation the main and the most important thing is the recipient is put on immunosuppressant. So let us write it here. After transplantation, the patient, the recipient is given immunosuppressant. Immunosuppressants like one such substance is cyclosporin or cyclosporin A. Now what is this immunosuppression going to do? This recipient has received an organ from some other individual's body. If it is identical twin, then all those antigens, all those histocompatibility complexes which are present on the donor's kidney are same as that of the recipient's body because they are identical twins, monozygotic, so it is exactly same. But if it is taken from any other person, close relative, parents or anybody, living or dead, then 100% matching is not possible. 100% matching takes place only in case of identical twins. That means something on this kidney is different from the recipient's body. And our immune system can differentiate between self and non-self. So that different protein or antigen would be identified by the recipient body as non-self. And our immune system or the recipient's immune system will start to destroy that. Immunosuppression suppresses the immune system of the recipient. So recipient's immune system is suppressed to that level where it doesn't recognize the non-self part or that foreign particle present on that kidney. 
after some time this dose is slightly reduced and slowly and gradually the immune system is brought back to its normal. If immune system is suppressed to accept this kidney or this organ, then there is a risk that the other foreign particles, germs, pathogens which are entering, immune system will not be able to identify them also. So the chances of infection are going to be very high and that is why after transplantation, the patient needs to be hospitalized for a longer period of time so that the patient is free, of, uh, free from all these infections and there is a close monitoring which needs to be done. After the body accepts this organ, then the dose of immunosuppressant will be slowly lowered and the immune system will be brought to its normal level. So this is uh, the final thing which has to be done if the patients, both the kidneys, fail. Dialysis may work for some time, but finally another kidney has to be transplanted and depending upon the availability, it can be taken from a living donor or can be taken from a cadaver also.